Speaker's Corner has had a Nazi revamp since its reopening. The real racists! The real Nazis! And the infiltration of protests by NRX adjacent accelerators continues. This may have to be my last video on the subject. Clearly our teams, the NRX ground teams, are very curious about who's working against us. <coughs> well, so you're threatened by me. <laughs> so you're threatened by me. You're so threatened by me that you've had to send your goons out to watch me in my area. Fucking hell, man. How weak are you? What's very important is we don't want you to interfere with our protest movements. All the great work we've done with uh, resistance to all these people. And um, people are invited every day. We don't want you sniffing around. So Am you're I being observed. Up? As you're well aware, you've been smart enough to notice you're being observed and monitored by the NRX ground teams in North London. Alerta, alerta, anti barista. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can carry on doing what you do. Look, we finished off, almost finished the Tommy Robinson movement. You're ahead of the curve. You can just do things like track the uh, end of Tommy or something, but don't go probing into the advanced vanguard of NRX operations. Or else, the last, the last what? 72 hours, in the last 72 hours, you should be observant that you have been observed at this point. Or else what, Ralph? We might have to raise the surveillance level. Nazis are in power. Hail Boris. And their Goebbels-style psyops run deep. In Denmark, in Copenhagen, in Berlin, we have the schedule of all the protests. The left, the centre and the right are going to hijack all these events in lockdown for their political purpose. Now, the fact that you might find it, oh, it's morally repugnant, virtue signalling, girl died, that's your problem. All the next events will be hijacked and accelerated. Heiko knew his role. Steve was there for purpose. Heiko was there for purpose. Sam was there for purpose. You running around saying, look, they're all doing this. So what? A few moments later. Uh, and now that the right has been divided into all its pieces and the left is split after the Trump election, the Biden election, the next step is going to be to arrange the pieces on the board to make the left, right, and middle come together preparing for the election, being anti-government. Heiko is there on the left being anti-government for a very different reason than Steve is. As very different from the Tommy people, and our job, of course, is to assist uh, assist these people along this direction. And there we go, people. Steve in the background. Hello. You right, mate? Yeah. You right. What's going on? Come to troll us. Come to troll you, mate. You go ahead. Troll go ahead. Trolling hard. Troll away. Troll away. Man, you're not ready for the anti trolling fight. Yeah, that's it. That's it, man. Anti trolling game is strong. <laughs> so, a few weeks ago at Speaker's Corner, Steve was asked about my video on the silent vigil by a live streamer called Veli Vision. Ask Steve because he has watched Lister's document. Have you out? Steve, what do you think of Lister's documentary about you? That you're working with the far right, with the I'm left, and everyone. I'm going to show up here sometime. So I'd like to have yeah. a chat with him. I'm, I'm not going to gonna give him any um, attention by tweeting it. With his loudmouth behaviour at Clapham Common <laughs> and his multiple appearances on mainstream media, including LBC, Steve projects his own anti-lockdown movement's attention-seeking qualities onto me. So, Lister, like Lister. many people, is just an, att uh, uh, an attention-seeking whore. And they're asking, is Steve at NRX? No. It's a bit strong, that one, isn't it? Oh, it's an NRX, is yeah. it? It's Ralph's. Ralph's thing, yeah. What is it? Uh, 
telly. Man. These two need to work on their poker faces. It's cold out here, man. It is getting real, man. It's cold, man. Steve won't acknowledge me on Twitter because he doesn't want his audience linked to my expose on the vigil. So he lets his flying monkeys attempt to deal with me online instead. I was warned by the clown world to leave Steve alone. I did what Steve wouldn't expect me to do. I turned up to Speaker's Corner the following week, like he suggested. Did he defend his behaviour? Of course not. He instantly turned to gaslighting me. I know. You ask multiple people to sit down in front They're of a police van. Do, do you deny or do you admit that? You're not talking. That's a not. And listen closely for the person with the recognisable voice inciting people to block the police from leaving. It's Steve from Speaker's Corner. Sit down in the way. People sitting down. But it's difficult to gaslight someone when the video evidence is on their side. As well as random strangers who tell it as it is. You're white as a ghost because this is the first time I've been out here. Pink. Pink. I'm a white guy. He's blue. He's blue. Today is Tuesday. No, it's Sunday. Hello, so he's on. You're not a white guy. Yeah, no, I am. No, I'm talking about his hair. I've seen him before. He's not well. I don't know. He's he's He looks healthy to me. If anyone needs to worry about their mental health, it's Steve's mate who almost got a little flashy. Yeah, okay. Go on then. Go on then. Go on then. What stopped you? He couldn't even remember his own role as someone who points out suspected Antifa affiliates. Just a quick spot. There's a little group of Antifa. Come over this way. <laughs> Orange food. Well, you're not well, it's very evident. No, it's very you used to be well. well. You're not well because you don't remember the fact that Haiku gave you the megaphone. Haiku jumps down into the bed of flowers in order to share the megaphone with his friend from Speaker's Corner, who has an important announcement to make. So why don't you explain why you now want to tune was there as well? Yeah, wasn't she? You're deluded. She yeah, wasn't there. Yeah, okay. and, and, and you called me a spotter. <laughs> you're you're not spotting. You're not your mental out. health. Oh, that's only time, Lister, yeah. your mental health is deteriorating. It's on video. I pointed at something. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on video? I you see, you're not well, Lister. You need help. Fucking hell. You need help. Fucking you need help. help. Look at go. Go follow that guy over there. I think Is that what I said? Something like that. You are now worse so than you're the one that's delusional because you don't remember what you said. And I don't remember exactly. He spent hours in his bedroom. It's on video, mate. So who's the delusional one? What did hey, you say? Who's the delusional one? Cam on your back. Who's the delusional one? Who's the delusional one? Yeah, I was. Is it me or is it you who's denying the video? Look at yourself in the mirror. And Steve himself, who foamed at the mouth at the mention of Veli. The guy who he couldn't remember meeting last week. But you will call me out here when Veli asks you. Who the oh. fuck's Veli? I don't even know who Veli. You're talking about Brian Hurl. Who the fuck's Veli? 
Calm down. You well, you just said Veli right? told me to do something. I Veli don't know anyone on called Veli. There's a guy seen... on camera what who you asked you about my video. Brian Hurl. Not Brian Hurl. I don't know who Veli, Veli is. Well, he's... He spat everywhere. Fortunately, the wind blew it away from me, emphasising the very need to wear masks. This foaming at the mouth psycho needs to be in a muzzle. I'm not saying that it's meaningful, but it is interesting to note that all the Speaker's Corner live streams stopped abruptly before my arrival. Here's a live streamer called Banksy, having this posh biker seem to assert his authority upon his own arrival. Yeah, yeah, he's a Sunni antagonist. Yeah. 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 Let me, let me end this. Okay, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this because there's nothing much happening and I wanna go and it's coming up to an hour anyway. Banksy claimed there was nothing going on, but it didn't really look like that as people stepped to action from behind him. This biker guy is linked to the whole Access Media gang. Say, lads, Edgeware Road is just there, so you're here. What's up? Yeah, nice one, mate. We will move in two minutes. Oh, you're yeah. yeah. He first appeared one night after a protest a few months back and was taking a real keen interest in their operations. Yeah, Is your camera we'll... over, overheat or never? Nah, that's fine. Outside. Yeah, already. In the summer, we're going to go And this thing. Do you leave it on the camera, dude? The, the box, yeah, just hangs there. And you don't put it in your back pocket or anything? Or? I used to put it in my bag, but it got a bit too hot. So yeah, okay. I hang it on there, and it gives me like... Is that Recently, he's been turning up more frequently, and he was out with actual interview and subject access as they filmed one of the Free Palestine protests. Your main name is Tiger King, Crazy yeah. King. Was it Tiger? Tiger King, was it? A uh, big shout out to the Cleveland Browns, and uh, if we do anything crazy, let's Sir Roger know right now we're doing. Let's yeah. go mental. Let's go chicken yeah. oriental. <laughs> let's go TV radio rental. Nice. Uh, a lot of police up ahead kicking off. And then at another protest on Saturday the 15th, when the anti-lockdown Nazis had a large protest at the same time, Sam from Subject Access went from the anti-lockdown protest to the Free Palestine protest, and look who was there again, this time right before it all kicked off. Sam moves closer to the David Brent Proud Boy and they share a brief conversation which sounds like A police officer gets egged which I'm guessing was also more far-right infiltration, considering based Welshmen's claim earlier in the day that they've brought the eggs. BBC is going to get taken out with eggs and paint and all sorts now in about 20 minutes. Why, well, this is like planned? Or well, that's what I was told. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh... He was seen with Fiona Hine and this militarised, padded, balaclavered man leading the protest. Odd, really, considering their stance on masks. All right. Welshman is uh, talking to taxi drivers. They want people to stop here. Anyway, I digress. It's no surprise that a load of non-Palestinian looking people seem to be right in there accelerating the chaos. Like this guy in the white trying to light that spark with the police. Thank <laughs> you. 
Notice how it's getting much busier outside the embassy. This is after the majority of the protesters from earlier in the day have left as it turns to evening. Again, just like at the silent vigil. It eventually blows up in the crowded corner where Sam has been standing all this time and then the obvious chaos ensues. Oh, my God. 
calm, bro. You smack the man. Hey, bro, I'm 16. A woman warns the accelerators to calm down due to an increased police presence from around the corner. And then in they come. Watch how those responsible run from behind the chaos they caused. And from this point onwards, the spark was well and truly lit, and the manufacturing fire raging, until the fire brigade came in to attempt to decelerate the spread of chaos. Oh, 
Notice how at each attempt to accelerate, there's at least one genuine Palestinian advocating protester trying to calm the situation. But the guy in white simply just doesn't care. Where have we heard that before? I'm glad you're here. Come on. I don't care. Good. The guy admits to attending both protests, and he used the walking CCTVs as his beacon for the chaos. Yeah, I was watching your speech earlier, that's how I got here. Because so I was at the other one, I was at the James Park one, and it was a joke. And even when the initial guy who lit the spark continues to act belligerently, there has to be a real collaborative and repetitive effort to restrain this specific attention seeker, as well as the rest of the crowd. Let's 
çıktı çok iyi oldu. Ay yok doğru yüzde bendim lan. Yok 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 If you're not yet convinced of what I'm showing you, does this behaviour look like that of somebody who cares about anyone as he throws two women into a heavily armed police line?
The woman relentlessly holding back the guy in white is an absolute inspiration. The weekend after, it was more of the same. This time, with Steve in attendance and a few more familiar faces. Click the like, so the stream is gonna get uh, more visible. Watch how this group swarms together like a flock of birds. They're pushing back. And I was surprised to see Steve hanging around with Ralph's flying monkey, Samuel Jack. I remember when Steve called them out as Nazis. These people are the real far right, the real racists, the real Nazis. Not the people that people have just been bandying around these words for, for months and years against anyone that, that says something that's of a different opinion. These are real, actual, dangerous, racist, far-right Nazis. Especially for this behaviour, alongside his sometimes sidekick Samuel... You're just going to be rude. Jack, these two go much further than being rude. Much further than trolling. In this next clip, I think it can be much better described as racially aggravated harassment. Sam just said, this guy, he's a right con man. So this is targeted harassment towards a whole group of people based on a single homeless person's alleged crimes. Like Samuel is some sort of vigilante or something. What's his next suggestion? I wonder. Hey, you can see them over here. Yeah. Look at the way they act. Huh? <laughs> I got a spit on my back. Just, I don't know the long time for it. Huh? It's our terror. Huh? <laughs> Look at all these. Where are they? Huh? <laughs> Should we throw a chair at them? Yeah, what a great idea, Samuel. It's absolutely no surprise to me that this is the behaviour of conservative voters these days. When their leader openly promotes racist tropes as he does. <laughs> She's going to come and try one more hit. <laughs> she looking for a shoe? She's doing a sign of a scene. Let's wait for And what do they call, li li listen to how they behave for the next 20 minutes, by the way. And what, and, and what, and what do they call themselves, these Nazis? Because, because they come up with a little phrase, a little name that they want to call themselves. And the name they've come up with is... NRX. Nah. It's strong that one, isn't it? And NRX, isn't yeah. it? It's Ralph's. Ralph's thing, yeah. 
What is it? Uh, a sports car was targeted by a group of the protesters for apparently sticking up a finger. Oh, something is happening there. Police running to it. Look who was there alongside Steve to capture the chaos. Our David Brent Proudboy impersonator. What happened? What happened? Oh, they smashed the car. They smashed the car. Stuff of people now. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't do that in a crowd, in a regardless. He stuck his finger up. That's what happened. Right. Here's his footage, and you tell me in the comments what you think happened here. Back to Speaker's Corner. You're delusional. Amen. <laughs> no, you're refusing to acknowledge... To respond to some video. idiot on Twitter who desperately keeps putting me on his tweets, begging me to respond, and I think, no, why would I? I just want you to... Why would I respond? Because you did something toxic and what? went to a silent vigil with the intention of turning it into a Ooh. protest, oh. promoting an anti semitic Juicy, spicy, with spicy. With As I concluded during my silent vigil expose, the reason the Germans did not revolt against their Nazi government for their treatment of the Jews is because of the socio-economic conditions they found themselves in. They were largely forced to simply not care enough to call it out, or simply weren't in a position to, due to being financially crippled or trapped by the ego, manipulated by the Nazi propaganda. At the end of the day, we all have a price, and this will be exactly the method of how Steve's anti-Semitism works. And I will prove that argument as such. What did you do at the vigil, Steve? Okay, so what did he do what did then? He do? So Tommy Robinson. Oh, I like it. What's he Love got it. to do? You're with a speaker. You're obsessed with the man. Tommy Robinson. Yeah. yeah. You do, have, the you, have you thought you uh, have great replacement uh, <laughs> theory? No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, so no, I've got no, proof no. of it on my channel. He's got proof of everything. Do you know Martin Solomon? Who? Martin Selmer? Never heard of him. So he sounds like a hoot. He's a guy who uh, <laughs> is famous for his uh, putting swastikas on synagogues in Austria. Oh, uh, oh one Tommy of them. Robinson. I don't like him. Tommy Robinson came to Speaker's Corner to read out this speech written by Martin Selner promoting can, can, can the Great just, Replacement just... Conspiracy Theory. Now it was pretty obvious to anyone at the time how anti-Semitic Martin Selner is. But for Steve to not call it out simply shows he doesn't care enough about it. But we're talking about the anti-lockdown protesters. Why is that protest group anti-Semitic? Well, many of their network have been just as anti-Semitic as Martin Selner, and each time it's been ignored by their comrade Steve. They've been seen minimizing the genocide of the Jews by using the yellow star to compare their protest movement to the Jewish plight. This minimization comes from a lack of care, or care to even understand why it's anti-Semitic in the first place. I already pointed to the conspiracies they promote at the end of my vigil documentary, 
But the full-on proof comes from the newspaper that's been handed round Speaker's Corner for the past two weeks. You're hanging around with anti-Semites promoting an anti-Semitic message and you're denying it. I which is a common characteristic to why are you promoting their... Do, uh, so Even though you're not Semitic? Yeah, I know. Do you know, so do you know the, uh, mate, do you know the uh, anti-lockdown protest? In the you wear, uh, wearing like a yellow star. Page 3 has an article written by a person called Lasher Darkmoon. Her article goes on to project how the anti-lockdown movement plans to insert their alternative truth into the mainstream in order to control the minds of the masses. An alternative truth that ends in Holocaust denial by the end of the article. What's that? It's the light newspaper, the free newspaper. It's just talking about... I don't easily about, read the newspaper. It's to, it, this is interesting. It's talking about the current situation. But it's not the mainstream media version. Oh, OK. All right. Thank you. This is going to go to the bin. Isn't it? On the back of the newspaper is a full page advert for Piers Corbyn and a quote from legendary Holocaust denier, I presume that's what it means, Dr. Vernon Coleman, famous for his report that modern day Nazis used to back up their claims regarding the anti Semitic rate replacement conspiracy theory. Hence why I initially started with Tommy Robinson and Martin Selner. But Steve simply doesn't care enough to learn. He doesn't care enough to call out real anti-Semitism. He just does it when it suits him, like calling out non-existent swastikas. It's well, a swastika! In front of a Jewish boy as well! That's terrible. No, that's I terrible. Do I don't know. Enjoyed it, enjoyed it! Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. If you've been up all night, get it out. What's going to say what it says? says. <laughs> Are you blind? Are there any crayons? <laughs> Are there any uh, it is actually like. Ram I actually spoke with Jim earlier, the guy currently holding the camera. He was also at the vigil, wearing a mask, probably for the first time. Because again, just like Steve, he only cares about stuff when he can use it for his own advantage. I heard you say that. Child pornography was okay in the form of jewelry. No. There's something along their lines. I would say that person needs to be watched, but the law exists. I think that if someone's, uh, I, I mean, I'm not having this conversation. Again. Go on, please. No. Please, you were laugh about to do it then. Yeah, I know, but it's dumb. I this, know, no, I because know. do you know where this came from? This came from a fascist imagination right. where he needs this rule because and needs this question, and then he questioned me on it when I've never even thought about it before. It just so happened that what I said at the time is actually what the law is, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's a what fucking." Is what is the law say? Uh, go and check it because yeah. that's what I said. Uh, so and then. It, what is actually happening now is you taking the ideas of fascists and oh well, oh the idea that the idea that he needs a law to prevent him from drawing pictures so he doesn't do this like that is his imagination I don't need that I've never thought about that and you're and you're promoting that meme I'm now by asking the question so that for, for listen for listen listen is those I'm no but listen that. listen I'm those, Jim those people who have never thought of that and might listen to this now, have now had that idea. And then they've got that option of which way to go. Most people will choose the right way, but that's, there'll be some people will be like, oh, actually, that might be a good idea. That and that is how point, these memes spread. And that, is, no, no, no. The whole point is these things don't need to be talked about because they we know, do. no, we know what right and wrong is. Well, and if we don't, don't and if we, and if we don't, they, they haven't fucking thought about it or they are doing it already. And those people need to be watched. As soon as, as soon as you start pointing fingers at someone who's never thought about it before, that means you are the toxic person. So why are you asking the question? Is it because you need that law to prevent you from doing these things? I'm not asking the question. I'm saying, I'm telling you what I heard. Yeah. And you heard it from a fascist and this is why you're being manipulated by fascists and you're getting them to make more baity fucking videos of where I talk about certain issues I and it's like this, oh look this, what he this, said I do not propagate anyone's opinion. but yeah uh, like another thing when I'm watching the footage from uh, the vigil and based Welshman's in the chat like directing people giving people ideas and then they follow those about, ideas about getting, some, getting some other footage instead of the same man's <laughs> And him 
you calling him is the first point of call to be like, who's this guy waving at me? No, because I was making sure it was you, innit? And I know that he, he's got disdain for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You knew you knew already. I knew that, I knew and that. So you, so you knew that he called me out, called me names for fucking weeks and called me out until one of my, one of my Twitter followers from a fucking another country had to tell me that, that what was going on and then I'm like oh so I started listening in I'm at work and I'm like oh see what they're fucking talking about sometimes I'd log on straight away and they're talking about me it's like okay so they dragged me into this area because they couldn't fucking you stop just talking made about me a target. You just no threw yourself into the right maybe yeah, into the ultimate right people what and try fascist. and treating you people went, with respect you, you and to talking to people on a level without no, calling them names them and ignoring those no names fucking reasoning with them idiots they're all thick as fuck oh is that what you're saying obviously what about the what the old guy that go around shouting about the muslims and the creating all this division obviously they're thick yeah and so obviously. these obviously so it's not a fucking it's not rocket science to start so uh do you not oh. think that i try and go in and uh try well, and I'm saying show the way that is no no it's to not types of people yes be told, be no, told no, no. it is. Listen, like the Muslims listen, can say, like the listen. Muslims can say, you can't talk about you can't talk about our prophet in that way. You can't turn up to a right wing wally just like that, asking stupid fucking well, questions. Okay, take your because, own advice. Because because let me tell you, let me finish, let me finish. I'm about to take my own advice. Finish first, yeah. You can't expect anything different. You know these people, you're calling them out for what being like what they're being like, and you expect them no, to I don't like call them out, I call out their figures. You expect them to act differently. I call out the their figureheads. No, no I call people. I call out their figureheads no, and show no, the way that their yeah, figureheads like, are like manipulating. I'm saying, you can't do that about the Muslims. No, no, you think you can no, do no, that because about the fucking hold on, no, hold on. I talk, I, I talk, the way that the way that no, but why do you think that you can do it then with the police? What do you mean? Because the police are paedophile protecting scum, mate. And, and the far that. right arm. What? And the far right arm. Do you see me going the far right are the absolute bodies? No, no, but you're telling me that I can't do the same thing that you're doing, even though that there's paedophile protectors in, expect, in the no, police. But, but there's people nicked. who you see me getting nicked. You see me getting nicked on a, on a fucking occasionally basis. Yeah, right? I've been assaulted yeah. twice. Right, right, listen, right? My point is, yeah, fundamentally, the stick that I get up here from them, yeah? I expect it because of the shit I get. Yeah, and them. I expect it. Right, you'd be. But, right, but I don't well, get it from everybody, and, I, and I'm trying to appeal to the ones that yeah, I don't I'm, get it I, from. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, exactly. Like, for now, like, for instance, the time and the place, innit? What I'm saying is, you turn up to these valleys and that, dress like that. What do you mean, dress? I, Bro! Dude, I can dress how I want. Of course you can, and you're free to do that, my brother, and I appreciate that. And, you can't and say that my dress is antagonistic. No, 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 no. Because that just then hides. Highlights the hypocrisy no, of no, the people no, no, that I'm no, 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 I'm point, trying to talk to. You're, you're twisting, they just they twisting, just hate the way that I look instantly, yeah, and people shouldn't do that. Yeah, people shouldn't do that. People so I'm trying to show them that they shouldn't do that because every misconception people have of me but when they ask me and talk not, to me, they're like, oh, the okay, I thought you, I thought it. you, hey, that's not the way to go about doing it. That's not using logic. That's not using rationale. That's that's thinking. I know what upsets these people. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, yes, 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 I don't upset you know. them. I do not ups The only thing that upsets them is me being just myself. Being, and I'm not going to be age, not myself. I'm not going to be, traveler. I'm not going to pretend to be someone else like fucking yeah. Haiku does. Wow. Pretends to be a policeman or pretends to be a fucking, like, performing fucking artist. I think, it, I think you can't really take that away from him. I think he is pretty, I think he is a performer, mate. Well, he is, and that's yeah. the problem with uh, the NRX targets people who are attention seekers and they like to perform. And that's what it is. They're not actors, they're just attention seekers. I prefer lonely. Is that what I mean? This might have to be my last video on the topic of infiltration of protests. I've been warned. Yeah, Ralph, I mean, I think like gonna lift up. Do you think that's serious? I, I take it seriously. Sorry, what did you say, Fo? He said, our teams are circling lift up. Our team, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ralph, in the chat. Yeah, I take that seriously. So, uh, like, uh, a week or two ago, uh, Jordan said, oh, 
I bet Lister thinks he's living in like a Truman show or something. I'm like, what? And now I understand what it means because right. he obviously knows that people oh. are fucking watching me. So why would George say that if I've never said anything about people following me before then? Alerta, alerta, anti-barista. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> alerta, alerta, anti-barista. So are you taking responsibility, are you, Ralph? I'm just an elderly Asian migrant. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, clearly our teams, the NRX ground teams, are very curious about who's working against us. <laughs> Well, so you threatened by me. <laughs> so you're threatened by me. You're so threatened by me that you've had to send your goons out to watch me in my area. Fucking hell, man. How weak are you? I'm in Germany, but... Yeah, you, you know, fucking ran say, away to Germany because you're a fucking weak bastard. Street demonstrations. You're a weak bastard, Ralph. He can't stand up for himself. Oh, police! Police! He hit me! He poured water on me. Barista, barista. You're fucking anti-barista. You cannot. The yeah, NRA. No, you cannot. No backbone. And to the protest movement, it won't be permitted. You run away to Germany where you're safe, and then you get your little fucking goons to watch me. Is 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 Nigel Farage got something over you, Ralph? I have a great relationship with Nigel Farage, thank you. I bet you do. Two years uh, but Nigel, is, Nigel, is, Nigel has a different part to play, obviously. Then. But what's very important is we don't want you to interfere with our protest movements or the great work we've done with uh, resistance to all these people. And people are invited every day. Right? We don't want you sniffing around. So you're being observed. As you're well aware, you've been smart enough to notice you're being observed and monitored by the NRX ground team. In North London. Alerta, alerta, anti barista. <laughs> it's okay, no harm yeah, will yeah, come to you. Brian Johnson, no harm will come to you because I promised uh, other people no harm will come to you as long as you behave. You know, as long as I behave. Right. So, what is classed as misbehaving then, Ralph? Um, you know, just uh, doing the wrong thing, you know. <laughs> Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. And uh, the uh, obvious reference from Rage Against the Machine, a standard Antifa song, doesn't help you when they're circling you in your neighborhood. Every move you make... Don't think you, I don't think you realize how much power you're playing with, my dear boy. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't realize. I don't, I don't think you understand the power and the reach of our influence. I give about how much have power you guys have. You have crushed the Tommy Robinson movement. Because the power is on not my side now. Because you guys, you guys are attacking me. So I, I am have not. I'm in, I'm in Germany. You guys, all your big gang are scared of one guy, one delivery driver. You're so afraid of one delivery driver and what he says that you have to send your fucking gang of goons to watch me. Observation. It's pathetic, Ralph. It's Just literally observation. pathetic. Observation to make sure you behave correctly. You're playing with powers way above your head. Yes, you do simpler things, and then, you know at least you've observed that you're being observed now closely, including your electronic communications. Yeah, I bet. Of course, it's important to protect multicultural, multiracial Britain, and the NRX are charged with ensuring such things occur. Don't poke your nose into places that they don't belong, or else what? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows what? Well, I'm not even in the country. It's, you know, you, the protest movements and the street movements are going to do what they need to do. 
are they? And what Correct. do they need to do? That all will be revealed, like you've at least been observing things. Do they need to silence me? They don't need to silence you. You just need to be you just need to be know that you're being observed by us. And we have tentacles everywhere. But you said that that I'm being observed to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Just Correct. is that just like Haiku oh. and his handler and Piers and his Haiku handler is doing a fantastic and Belly job. and his handler, you being on his fucking panel all the time. I'm just a guest. I'm just a guest on the Belly show. I no, you're Belly's someone who pretends that you're not doing things to manipulate the panel. I think Belly already told you off for insinuating that he might be manipulated by someone as stupid as me. We Belly all get it. manipulated by you guys. There's no fucking shame in being manipulated by a fucking psychopath. There Indeed. is shame in de completely denying the fact that you are. Look, we have observed. I've been manipulated. Everybody on this panel has been manipulated. Look, you can carry on doing what you do. Look, we finished off, almost finished the Tommy Robinson movement. You're ahead of the curve. You can just do things like track the uh, end of Tommy or something, but don't go probing into the advanced vanguard of NRX operations. Or else... The last, the last 72 hours, in the last 72 hours, you should be observant that you have been observed at this point. Or else what, Ralph? We might have to raise the surveillance level. Oh, really? So what do my private communications say, Ralph? It is okay. It is trivial to intercept your phone communications. We, huh? are, very, very, we are very technical, as you're no doubt aware. Yes. So you so, let the people do it. You follow the Tommy Robinson movement and watch the way, watch our work. Watch tomorrow's court conclusion. Monday, tomorrow morning is the final conclusion of our long activity, bringing the Tommy Robinson movement down to its knees. And don't you worry about the protest movement. It's not your concern. You should go chase fascists like Tommy Robinson, and then they should be fine. So you're going to be observed to make sure you're compliant. That's all. But Ralph, we had a corporate fascist regime in this world for fucking like centuries. So why don't you just do the right thing and whistleblow? Now it's not the time for that. Those that decide when that happens will happen. Already the events are occurring from Dominic to Boris. Hail Boris. All the way down. You see what we've done with Haiku. With no, David I don't Carlton, care about I don't care with about Resistance Boris. GB, with Piers Corbin. You've already figured out what we're up to. But you can't see the next stages. The teams that were sent to your location were just to let you know that you're not doing things unnoticed, Lister. <laughs> I know you notice me. Half my fucking audience is far right, mate. They're not really that far right. So anyway, I'm going to go, but I hope everybody listening realizes the fucking score now. If you're against me, you're with Ralph. If you're with me, you're against Ralph. That's just as simple as it is these days. So... Alhamdulillah. Hey, you stop. Hey, you stop. Yo. There are only like two positions you can have with or against. Sorry? Are there only two positions that can be held with or against? Yeah. We need to have a binary brain. If, 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 if you're on the fence, then you're pretty much appeasing Ralph. And appeasement of Nazis is pretty much seen as bad as being a Nazi. And that's going back to World War II. And Ralph is a fucking Nazi. Actually, my neighbor's beautiful home was uh, occupied by Goebbels, second in command. But I can assure you, I'm not a Nazi. You, on the other hand, are under observation list. Uh, we now know that. <laughs> Here's an example of me being followed at my supermarket. Remember the angry guy before my first water fight? Oh yeah, 
Hey, you are too small. You are too fucking so scared of you. You said you've been studying Islam for a year and a half. Four questions are fucked up and none of them you answer. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Muslim scholar! My ass! You can't you fuck me to no fuck home! Well, not to minimise the very serious surveillance I seem to be under, here's one of the most slapstick examples of the behaviour. This is the guy defending a far-right propaganda sticker I just ripped down from outside my local supermarket. Yes, these people have been watching me shop for the past few months. They watch me work while I deliver people's food. And they follow me around the block as I walk erratically through my area to get a feel for the surveillance I've been under. So who do I think is responsible? Well, here's my angry little shopper, donning a yellow star, stood next to Piers Corbyn while he makes a speech. This is like a couple of days after the supermarket. If you want to have a subject meeting about anti-Semitism, fair enough, but we're not having it here now. We're not having it here now. We are not having it here now. Sorry. Thank you. All right, I'd like to ask you, uh, just, just one, sorry, uh, sorry, just, just ignore, ignore. If the NRX have the means to infiltrate protests with teams of people with a singular aim, then they have the same means to surveil one of the only people to be shining a spotlight directly on these creeps. And if their puppet masters are the types of people to burn £50 notes in front of the homeless simply because they can, well, then they'll certainly surveil their critics, if it was only a question of ability to do so. And if any of you think I'm bullshitting, I wish I was. I'm just a normal guy, yet I've got Tory think tanks sending me threatening messages on social media. This was from shortly before the last general election. The network behaviour we saw at the Palestinian protest outside the Israeli embassy is the same network behaviour we saw at the silent vigil. And it's the same network behaviour that led to the insurrection on the Capitol in Washington on the 6th of January. If we don't shine a spotlight on this now, we may soon have an insurrection of our own. So like I said earlier, this may have to be my last video on the topic of the protest movements. Considering the surveillance I've been put under for the past month, and the uncertainty over whether or not the NRX martyring me would fit their game theory models, I should probably take better care of my own personal safety. I'm not saying for certain though, because if I'm put in a situation where I have nothing to lose, I will be forced to do what I'm supposed to do. Shine my spotlight. It's Ralph and his cult that called me out first. 
They obsessed over me, like I told Jim at Speaker's Corner. If I have to defend myself again in future, I might well have to defend myself. And when I do that, I tell the real truth, and nothing but the truth. I hope that I might have inspired more spotlights to shine on these creeps. If we had a thousand more spotlights, the NRX would not have the resources to surveil us all. Don't let them divide us. Be anti-reactionary. Be anti-NRX. Yes. Riot. What's wrong? What's wrong with using political protests and hijacking, hijacking and protests? What's wrong with using a silent vigil where people are all grieving? sorts of things? People right a now silent vigil where people are grieving is yeah, not somewhere use, to politicize. That is exactly your, what the far right claimed when no, they blamed opinion, it on Antifa. Right? But so I'm disagree. holding, I'm holding the far right to their own standards, and it is fucking disrespectful as fuck. Sure, that's your view, though. Richard, can you see that's your view? Expect your voice yeah. to be heard Richard, you need a speech, and, and to be able to promote your can fucking march Can you see that all the people who went there? But listen, to all the people who went there disagreed with you, right? No, they didn't. Uh, all the people that went there no, they all agreed went there with me it. because they really? removed Haiku from the fucking stage first. Haiku did and then once job. it got Haiku dark and, pe and, and people took advantage Haiku of, of the chaos Haiku and the darkness, then that's when the, when the mood changed. You sound jealous When the manipulations like changed. Haiku. That's when the mood changed, uh, Ralph. Yeah. Now, now, can I say something? Okay, so what I'm saying is if you look at your history of the last five to eight years, ten years, trying to get famous on Tommy of all the far right, that dried up for you at the Tommy movement has been killed. Now you seem envious and jealous of the other people who are rapidly rising the protest movement because none of them associate with you. Could it be, could it be possible that the real problem is you running around seeing things that aren't there, especially when you're envious of other people's success? What am I seeing? That looks like a pattern. That looks like a pattern. What am I seeing that isn't there? Yeah. So for example, you believe they were coordinated here. People can watch the video, it speaks for itself. No, that's not the question. When Haiku, oh, uh, when Haiku, uh, someone on the left, Haiku uh, Marcus, did his job, man. Haiku did hold on. Job. When Haiku, someone on the left, ha passes his uh, uh, megaphone over to Steve, someone yes. who's a Tommy Robinson flying monkey, right, who does everything Tommy Robinson says and, and wants, and Haiku is a fucking ardent fucking hater of tommy robinson yeah. what are they doing working together so yes yeah, there, was, there was there was an effort to work together right. across yeah. political lines and yeah. what thing that united everybody was their narcissism no, which is why it's relevant to you raheem that's a pop theory in your head because you're not a qualified psychologist no, a few questions not. right now would tell you the audience are literally no but let's talk about the last bit which you have evidence for yes they were all accelerated left right middle combining in a populist anti-covid thing it was orchestrated Haiku knew his job before he went there so did sam yes so what so you what? don't like it so what Obviously, Everyone all the people doing it, the there, truth, was there were 378,000 views of those combined videos in those 28 period. All those people saw it. There was you more than that. Part of it. It was you were part of it. 12, 12, you million, know, hang on, 12 sure. million on Twitter. No, no, I'm talking about the one video. You are part of that, and they're doing it. And you don't want you want the world to say, no, look at them. Don't do that. But obviously, the people are speaking. The people aren't speaking. Psychopaths are speaking. Ah, oh, you're, you're so back to back to things shrinking again, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not a qualified psychologist. Right? I know I'm not a qualified psychologist. You're not a fucking qualified hypnotist, but you still do it. I swear, can you please, for the love of God, stop giving Ralph all this power? I beg you. One of you are naive. Started... He's starting it. He starts. Dangerous. He's starting an international movement to destroy the West. He's a racist and stuff. Like, oh my gosh, it's just a bored Indian retiree. Like, leave him. Leave him. Um, let's start. Let me ask a question. Yeah, how serious do you, um are you when you think Ralph has all this power and people and um fall for it? Deadly serious. Who are these people that are falling for Ralph's power? Like I know anyone... two who did felt I know two who did fall for it and used to be his main two supporters. They've um unfortunately left the panel, but they were his main supporters. But what is what power does he have that that he can get people to follow behind him and cheer him along and stuff? So basically, it's not necessarily the power to like 
control. He basically just wants chaos. So if he can trigger you and he can get people arguing at each other, or if he can distract from stuff that's going on in his life by getting other people to argue and distract away from that, it, it's that it's that kind of manipulation. So he'll just drop in something like um, uh, Zubida, for instance, the way that he sent ethno-nationalists over there because he knew that um, Zubida's kind of like um, conservative values would align with the ethno nats and that that would kind of draw a division between the left and liberal policies that kind of are more protective of uh, minorities and Muslims. Ralph wants to set that division. So then if the ethnats used Muslims, like in Zabida's case, uh, to promote their shit, and they eventually got into power, then that's so detrimental for Zubida and Muslims because they're going to get removed from the country in one way or another. Liberals won't do that. They, they might um, teach your kids about um, sex education, but at least we'll let you live. Like, and, and that's the manipulation and where it gets really serious. And that's happening like in all of society on a on a massive scale at the moment interesting so you're saying ralph is the reason why they're over there not that she invited them over there to debate and take them on but he sent them and they and they like the the idiots that they are followed behind him and took his orders and went and done what he told them yeah to. so he he's Fuck just the trigger out. he's the he's the person that puts the people together that sh that he thinks should be together otherwise they would have never have met like what, what? What? At what point would Zubida really meet a national action like guy from fucking living in Spain? That that's that's Hello, engineered. Who are we talking about, by the way? Are we talking about people like Charlie Big Potatoes and those people? Charlie Big Potatoes, yeah. Oh God. Okay. And it's still I happening. Thought she, I thought she invited them onto our platform, from what I remember, and she wanted no. to date them. She, so she she would have invited them, yes, but it would have been a, this kind of like Ralph is the middleman who put them together. So Ralph alerted Zubida to their existence and he alerted Charlie Big Potatoes to Zubida's existence. So then once he plants the seed, then they're like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll invite him on, on the show. And they think it's their idea, but really... Ralph put, planted that seed to make sure that it was in their heads. So in the, in the video at the vigil, you'll see this guy called Actual Interview asking, um, uh, Piers Corbyn comes and meets him and he says, um, uh, oh, have you done any interviews yet? Because that's his main thing. But Actual Interview recognizes that it's a silent vigil and that people are grieving and it's not really appropriate. So he says, that's no, your only complaint. he says, I don't want to do it. You don't it. get to choose and that. Then, and then, and then, and then, Pier, and then once society. Piers Corbyn walks off, he actually goes and does some interviews because of that suggestion was in his head. It was like, oh, now, now it's got everyone went there for purpose, and it's and that's as simple as the manipulation has to be. It but, just has to be listen, that listen, simple listen, suggestion. Listen, listen, take your psychotic, this delusional illusion, magician, second in Denmark, in Copenhagen, in Berlin. We have to schedule of all the projects. The left, the centre, and the right are going to hijack all these events in lockdown for their political purpose. Now, the fact that you might find it, oh, it's morally repugnant, virtue signalling, girl, that, that's your problem. All the next events will be hijacked and accelerated. Heiko knew his role. Steve was there for purpose. Heiko was there for purpose. Sam was there for purpose. You running around saying, look, they're all doing this. So what? A few moments later. Uh, and now that the right has been divided into all its pieces and the left is split after the Trump election, the Biden election, the next step is going to be to arrange the pieces on the board to make the left, right, and middle come together preparing for the election, being anti government. Haiku is there on the left being anti government for a very different reason than Steve is, as very different from the Tommy people. And our job, of course, is to assist, uh, assist these people along this direction. Uh, and there we go, people.
Well. Do you know who runs uh, Tommy Robinson's Telegram? No idea. So he keeps using mine. Yeah, he's. I don't know. He's, 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 yeah. Doesn't say which. Oh really music didn't play? Right. Tommy CC's me in. Tommy CC's me in. Tommy CC's me in. Tommy CC's me in. Person and say, Can we just stop going to CC? Love. Are we good though? Just to say, I think. 